folks, what's going on today? I hope everybody's doing really good. Uh, today I want to just kind of go over a few blues figures, especially, uh, or specifically some Jimmy Page-esque type stuff, okay? Now, the last lick I just played there... Now, if you guys know, uh, you know, Zeppelin or Jimmy Page, you know, the tune I Can't Quit You, that's all through it, okay? It's an old blues figure, an old blues lick, you know. Probably one of the most recognized, in my opinion, is, you know, is that one. Probably the most universal blues lick ever laid down. So, I liked how Jimmy used this. He would do so many different variations of this, you know in live situations, and probably even on the record, you know. Uh, I haven't listened to the studio version of I Can't Quit You for a long time. I have a big collection of Led Zeppelin bootlegs, and uh, I listen to a lot of live versions of it, which is cool. And you know, I mean, one thing I will say about Jimmy Page, this guy was not scared to go out on a limb in a live performance. Not even a little bit. And I don't think the rest of the band was either. As a matter of fact, you can tell. These guys just, no fear, you know. Yeah, you'd make a few mistakes here and there, but you have to do that to get to the good stuff, folks. It's how it goes sometimes. Especially, you know, when you're making it up. Right there in front of, whatever, 80,000 people. Insanity. Anyway... <laughs> So you'll hear this lick a lot in that tune. I can't quit you and others too. He, you know, if it's just an old blues standard, I've heard him do similar things like this. So the, what's cool about it is Jimmy will do different variations. He may go. The next time he may go. does all kinds of cool little things like that so the first one everybody should know it if you don't know it then we're gonna learn it right now it's just an F shape in the fifth position here A chord just sweeping down through from the D string and I kind of snap the bottom of the the treble string the E string the one closest to the floor with my middle finger. Then we're going to come up to the tenth fret on the B string. Right? So the next little phrase is just the G string in the seventh fret to the fifth fret to the sixth fret and then B string in the fifth. And that ends the little lick, so... Okay, so all together it's this. Alright? Now, that's pretty neat, you know, and very useful. Now, there's all kinds of things you can do after that, you know, once that... Whoop. Always put something on the end of that depending on where you had it in the song so it's a really useful lick you know I've used this for many years and always something you can fall back on in the blues okay so what Jimmy would do is stuff like this he'd take something like that the next time he may go which is a little different phrasing. He'll slide up to that, well, the target note would be the B string in the 10th fret. Jimmy might slide up to the, uh, you know, 8th fret. And as he's, when he gets there, then he puts the big bend on. Really tricky to do, but really, really nice sound and tasty stuff. He may do like a... Or, now 
That's more Hendrix when you get into the... And all that is is... Okay, so when we do this little move... It's just bending the G string up. Almost a whole step. I don't quite get there sometimes just for the tension, but... So... Whoop. So we're bending that G string up. Then we're hitting the uh, B and A string in the fifth fret, right? So then we bend this B string up in the eighth fret, a whole step, right? So when we get it up there, your ring finger kind of hangs on the G string above it. See that? So when you bend the B up, you, you bend that B string up. When you got it up there, you hit the G string and let that down. So you get... Now that was a Hendrix kind of thing. He used to do that all the time. Uh, you know, in different positions too, not just there, but... Um, you know, there's all kinds of little facets to the blues that you can do, you know, just using one lick. I mean, if you think about blues music, a lot of it was just three chords, the one, four, and five. And a lot of the licks were really similar, if not even the same, a lot of times when it first, you know, was happening. They just play it, you know, in different time signatures, different meter that kind of stuff, and that alone can make it sound a little different, you know? There's all kinds of little tricks that you can pull off right in this F shape, too. There's a cool one. So... Uh, when you get to this, uh, B string in the 10th, uh, we're going to go on the G string, uh, G string in the 11th, B string in the 10th to the 12th, whoop, okay, so we got the G in the 11th, the B in the 10th, B on the 12th, then we have the uh, E string in the uh, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th, and then we're going to do this. E string in the 8th, hammer on to the uh, 9th, and then we're going to hit the B string in the 10th. And then we can do our little Jimmy Page ending. Okay? So again, you can do that too. When you get to that B string in the 12th fret, you can bend that up and then hit the uh, E string in the, the uh, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. Okay? So again, it like I said or you can just okay so you know it doesn't have to always go to the blues you know ending it can you could do like a, something I kind of come up with a month or so ago. I've been kind of noodling around with it, trying to see where I can fit it. So, E string, uh, 12th fret to the 9th fret, okay? Then we're going to go the B string 10th, and then the G string in the 11th. So, 
get a little triad going here, all right? We're just appagiating the note, so... Alright, again. So, E string 12th, 10th, B string uh, in the uh, 10th, and the uh, G string in the 11th. So, then we're going to do the same thing again, but we're going to start on the 10th fret with the E string. Okay? It's kind of tricky. Fun to play, though. Okay, so once you get those two shapes down, the next one we're going to start on the uh, ninth fret on the E string. Uh, so that will be the ninth fret on the E string to the fifth fret on the E string. And then we're going to hit the B string and the G string in the seventh fret. So. So once again, okay, so all right, enough noodling. I hope that helps, guys. Uh, the videos may be kind of intermittent here for a a little spell. Uh, I'll kind of explain, you know, what's going on as it unfolds. Uh, hopefully nothing serious. It's, you know, some health things that I'm dealing with right now. And, uh, you know, I may miss a few videos here and there. I'm just letting you know. Hopefully I don't, you know, miss them all. But, uh, you know, there might be a few days where I'm not going to be able to do too much. I still might, uh, you know, shoot a video and just shoot the breeze with you or something, though, you know, just to, to keep you guys involved and uh, stay in touch with you guys. So, well, anyway, I hope this helps, and uh, we'll see you guys real soon. Keep practicing, and be good. Okie doke.